I started on this journey really when my dad was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And I was thinking about, A, how much that shifted my life. It just fundamentally transformed it. I think sometimes we don't always recognize grief as grief. And maybe for us or a particular participant, it's more appropriate to just say, I have some sadness around it. And maybe for some people, grief is a loaded word. You know, so often when we want to create change in our lives, whether we're forced to or whether we choose to, um, there can be things that come up and get in the way. You know, this really was born out of that, the book that we're writing together, this podcast, it's really, you know, sort of dedicated to helping other people navigate life shifts and create conscious change. And Hello, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Susan Bushell. And I'm Susan Van Klink. And this is the Susan Squared Podcast a podcast dedicated to life shifts and consciously creating the change you want to see in your life. We're so glad that you decided to join us today. Let's get started. You know, Susan, I was thinking as we were getting ready for today, which is a big day, I think, for both of us, that um, what a journey we've been on. <laughs> and uh, I was sharing with my LinkedIn following that I started on this journey really when my dad was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And I was thinking about, A, how much that shifted my life. It just fundamentally transformed it. But it also um, made me think about the role that you played in helping me to process everything that was going on at the time and to really make sure that I didn't get stuck along the way. And so um, have been thinking about creating a forum to you know, sort of share this with other people, help other people through their life shifts. Uh, and, you know, so often when we want to create change in our lives, whether we're forced to or whether we choose to, um, there can be things that come up and get in the way. So, you know, this really was born out of that, the book that we're writing together, this podcast, it's really, you know, sort of dedicated to helping other people navigate life shifts and create conscious change. And that's why I guess I'm so excited to be here today. So thank you for joining me and for being a part of this uh, crazy uh, ride that we're on anyway. Well, thank you for inviting me, Sue. And <clears throat> from, from my perspective, yes, very much about um, sharing the knowledge that each of us have. And we definitely come from two different worlds, but it's so important. Um, I, I definitely feel this as I get older, that it's so important to share the accumulated knowledge that you've gathered over the years. There's there's no need to hide, uh, hide that information and to get it out there and to archive it so that people can use it and build on it. So thanks for, thanks for inviting me and I'm really enjoying it so far. Perfect. And one of the things I thought we should share with everyone who didn't get the memo, this is a live interactive podcast. So what does that mean exactly? Well, first and foremost, you'll notice that you're all anonymous. We can see you, but you can't uh, see each other. And that is on purpose. We wanted to create a safe space for people to come in and explore the different topics that we talk about. Um, but we will be a little later in the program inviting people to come on screen and join us. Um, if you're so interested and if you would like to be part of the dialogue, uh, we will be selecting people who raise their hands um, to come and join us on the screen. So no pressure and certainly you can stay anonymous in the background if you want to. But when the time is right, you'll see a, a raised hand button uh, in your list of menu buttons. And if you're interested, you can come and join us. Um, we're super excited. We had over 100 people register to join us today. Uh, we have dozens of people on the podcast um, as we speak. We will be you know, sort of making it interactive. We've got a poll that we're going to launch. Um, and then Susan and I will also be talking about the topic of grief, because it's not just about the loss of a loved one, which is really the grief that I've been thinking about and I've been talking about. But there have been many other types of grief that we've both encountered through our lives and that that you may be encountering too as you join us here on the call. So we're going to go ahead at some point and launch a poll and kind of get some feedback from everyone about the type of grief that you're dealing with. And maybe it's none of the above. You just want to join us here today, which is great too. So Susan, we talked in advance of this episode of, you know, sort of what is grief? And what kind of grief is there? And, you know, sort of how do we 
how do we think about grief and keep from getting uh, getting stuck in it? Because that's one thing I've definitely seen in my journeys over the last year and a half is people that have been grieving for years, if not decades. And I understand I'm early, right? Every I think most people who are joining us today know that I'm in my first year of grief, a year of first, as people tend to call it. Um, and that's the grief from losing my dad. And I lost my dad to a terminal illness back on August 12th. So four year, four months ago today. And But there was a lot of grief even before we lost him because of the terminal diagnosis and knowing that he had a limited amount of time left with us. Um, so that's one type of grief, but I know there's a whole bunch of others. Do you want to just talk about some of the types of grief that we've been discussing, you know, sort of leading up to this? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. And, you know, I have to say my source is primarily through session work with the clients I've been working with since 2003. Um, the themes that come up quite regularly for people are um, things like grieving the loss of a job when they've been laid off or um, even the loss of a career when they realize, you know, this this kind of industry is not going to work for me anymore. I've changed. It's changed. It's fading. Um, there's something going on. And, and so they kind of pushed out of something that perhaps they've really invested in or been very happy with. Um, it can also be um, the grief of uh, the loss of a home or a community. And that could be an actual physical house that you love, but for some reason, perhaps um, out of your control, you've had to leave that house or a community as in a physical city or town or a community as in like a supportive community, a, a friendship group, um, you know, the people you curl with. Um, suddenly you can't curl anymore for some reason and you've lost your social group. It can be the loss of an identity, right? So I, but I thought I was the one that um, uh, was, was the solid person that everybody could count on. And then all of a sudden something happens in life where you weren't the solid one who could be counted on. And, uh, and you had invested so much in that identifier that you don't, when you, when you lose it, you're not quite sure who you are. And it can really throw your life off balance. Um, uh, yeah, obviously the loss of, of pets, of friends, of family members for sure. And, um, and I, I, it's, it's um, the feeling obviously is greater or lesser depending on the situation, depending on how close you are, how attached, how much of you you've invested in that loss or that what you have lost. But um, but yeah, grief shows up in many shapes and colors. And sometimes I think people don't recognize it as that. They just notice that they're not really wanting to get off the couch for a while, or they're not as interested in um, chatting with friends on the phone or getting together. Um, they notice that there's a, a, a change in their demeanor and maybe even the people around them do as well, but maybe they're not seeing it as a classic situation of grieving a loved one. So it shows up. It can and I would add to that, Susan, you know, we're seeing macro grief factors as well. So if you think of, you know, I remember when Dave first told me about the fact that Russia had invaded Ukraine and he was so, Dave is my husband, everyone, for those of you who don't know, um, and he was very upset by that news. And I remember thinking, it's a long way away. Why are you so upset by this war in Ukraine? And then about two or three days later, it hit me and I was grieving for the people of Ukraine. I was grieving for the people of Russia. I was grieving for, you know, all of us who felt the impact of that decision and, and that macro condition. COVID, I think, was something that impacted all of us in many different ways and creating many different layers of grief. Um, and I know a lot of people felt during the early days of COVID, especially that first year, I can't, can't believe I called that the early days of COVID, but yeah. this idea that we couldn't just freely get together with the people that we loved or do things that we had just taken for granted for so long, going into the office to go to work or, um, you know, sort of getting together to celebrate um, or even mourn. You know, I know of a lot of people that didn't get to have a funeral or a celebration of life for their loved one who passed during that time because of the, the COVID protocols. So, um, yeah, and I'm thinking about too, like, um, if you remember back to that first Christmas when there were no vaccines yet and we were basically told don't get together. And so the grief of not having the usual holiday celebrations or get togethers, I think there was, there was the Easter as well. Um, so for many people, their usual faith holidays or their family celebrations and holidays weren't happening. And I think too, there's been so much in the news about the state of the planet and climate change and um, people have been trying to do so much, but there's there's definitely a sense of grief about what's happened to the planet and the desperation about trying to turn around climate change, as well as the grief for the situation for Indigenous people and um, 
and uh, my, some in, 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 in Canada and, and perhaps elsewhere too. Yeah. Yeah. So lots, lots of things going on. And, and so interesting that for our inaugural podcast episode, we would choose a light topic like grief to talk about, um, not to make fun, but really, you know, through my writing and connecting with people on my end of life journey with my dad, I was very aware that there were a lot of people who had been through it themselves, who had uh, lost a loved one and and we're grieving that loss. Um, and un unfortunately, as a society, it's not something that we talk about easily. It's not something, uh, it's universal and it's isolating. And so a little bit of what we wanted to do here was to open up um, and make it maybe a little less isolating for people who are, are experiencing it um, and, and just kind of pull the curtains back on it a little bit, as well as give some tools and and techniques and things you can do to keep processing and moving through grief, whatever that grief might be. I have a mantra that the only way through it is through it. Um, and if you don't go through it, you, um, you will get stuck. And um, I think I, I see it with people who are still, um, you know, not experiencing all the joy that they could be experiencing in their life. Um, and I remember when when my dad was first diagnosed, the anticipatory grief, which that was a term I didn't know at the time, but I've come to understand is like the anticipation of losing him. Um, even though I'd lived for 25 years with, you know, the knowledge that he had a bad heart and could go at any time, having a finite definition of six months left to live really hit me hard. And then I read that sometimes anticipatory grief can be completely separate from the grief of actually losing the loved one and that it didn't necessarily diminish the grief I would feel after he was gone. I'm going to share with everybody in my case, I actually think that uh, because of the work I did with Susan, because of my writing, because of the processing I did while he was still alive, I believe that my grief process has been lessened. Um, it's certainly not over yet. And we'll talk a little bit about some of my quote unquote, symptoms of grief that I experience. Um, but I do feel very fortunate that I had the tools to move through and process uh, what I was feeling and, and someone to work with uh, to, to process them. So we're going to talk a little bit later in the episode about emotional freedom technique and tapping and how tapping can be a great tool uh, to help in life shifts and the changes we want to make in our life and how we process things like grief. Um, but we'll also talk about other modalities and mechanisms for processing grief. It's not the only one. It's just one that that Susan and I have found, and, and it helps. I will also share that Susan and I found resonance in each other because Susan had recently lost her mom, and uh, her dad is in a, a nursing home, and she's the caregiver for her dad. So there were layers upon layers of this that we talked about, and um, that definitely brought us together as well. And we're super happy to be doing this. And anyway, yeah, there were a lot of common, common threads. We could really relate to each other's day-to-day -day life and what we were, what we are dealing with. <laughs> 100%. And, um, you know, certainly at different ages and stages of life, you'll go through different types of grief processes. I was even thinking, um, today about the, the grief of being an empty nester, which I know hit some people, but also the grief of being a new parent. And that sounds so funny, right? Because there's so much joy in being a new parent. Um, but you're also grieving sometimes the loss of the life that you have to give up in order to be a new parent. So we'll talk about that as well. But before we go any farther, let's launch the poll and just see who's joining us today and what, um, uh, let me see, relaunch it. There we go. Um, Who's joining us today and what you might be dealing with and if it's all of the above then pick the one that is the most relevant to you it should come up on the screen you should be able to um, uh, just scroll and pick on the one that relates to you and tell us how long you've been processing grief on that particular topic for i'm just going to read through some of the options so uh, top of the top of the house grieving the loss of a loved one um, grieving the loss of a pet, grieving the loss of a job. We see a lot going on in the news today about layoffs. And, and sometimes you grieve the loss of a job, even if it was by choice. But a lot of these losses are things that we don't choose. They happen to us. Uh, grieving a recent health diagnosis. It could be for yourself or it could be for someone else. 
um, the loss of a friendship, uh, world events. Politics has been a big source of grief for a lot of people over the last several years. Um, the loss of a marriage or serious relationship, and then I'm not grieving, but I'm interested in this topic or one of the presenters. That would be another option. And then for how long? Less than a year, one to five years, five to 10 years, or more than 10 years. So I'm gonna launch the results in just a minute, but I will give everyone one more chance to weigh in. We've had about 75% of participants who have entered uh, answered the poll, so that's great. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and I'm gonna share the results. And I can't see what you all see, or I, I don't exactly have your view. So hopefully you can see, you know, the majority of people joining us today are grieving the loss of a loved one uh, or a recent health diagnosis. Those really two seem to be the two. Um, but we also have someone with us who's grieving the loss of a job, uh, some who are grieving the loss of friendship, world events, um, marriage or serious relationship. And, Okay, and you'll see it spread across the 10 years with most being within the five-year mark, which I think is not surprising. Um, but again, not surprising to me as well to see people that are have been grieving for uh, more than five years and, and some even more than 10 years. So I'm gonna stop sharing that. And uh, thank you for sharing with us. It helps us to know who's on with us today, what you're dealing with and um, how you might, you know, sort of be approaching this topic with us. So Susan, when you and I were preparing for this, and I think, you know, sort of even writing um, the book we were writing together, we were talking about big G grief, right? The, the grief that we just listed there. Um, and we were talking about little G grief as well, like the day-to-day -day grief, grieving that can happen. Um, do you want to share anything about that just in terms of like, how do we I really think of it in layers, like how do we deal with all the layers of grief and what can we do to make sure that we're not, um, we're, we're, we're not getting weighed down by grief or is it okay to get weighed down by grief? And then, you know, at what point do we start to wait, make our way back? How, how does that work? Do you think? Well, you just gave me a beautiful segue into an important um, part of what I wanted to be sure to cover today, which I, I tend to call sort of my four step process to dealing with anything that's emotionally challenging, but I think it particularly um, resonates with, with grief. First thing is allowing the feeling to be there, no matter what you call it. If it has an element of a, of a sense of loss, um, capital A, allowing that feeling to be there. So not fighting it, not tucking it under the rug, not pretending like it's not there, not distracting yourself with, with drinking or television or gaming or, or whatever, but just really saying, hey, that, that is there and I can feel it. And um, it's, it's something that's, that's unique within inside of me and my body. And I'm going to allow this to be here and, and, and not pretend. Um, and the, the second step is acknowledging that this is here. This feeling of sadness, loss, grief is, is here. And I'm going to honor it and acknowledge it and not get, like I said, not pretend. The third step is allowing yourself, and this is the tricky one, because <laughs> we tend to fight feelings that are uncomfortable. We want to push them away. Um, we want to shut it down. Um, what if I go into that feeling and, and I get lost in it? It feels like a deep well I can't climb out of, but this is really important, which is the the, the sense of, of accepting, accepting that this is a feeling I'm having, even if I don't necessarily have a, a label for it, but just allowing, sorry, accepting that, yep, this this is here and I'm noticing it it's helpful to identify where you feel it in your body. And that final step of then you need to address it. So it's in, in my world, and, and I'm not a psychotherapist, I'm an energy therapist. And the way that I address issues is we talk about it a little bit, but then we get right down to accepting it, allowing it to be there, and then addressing it with tapping. Or um, I use a few energy psychology techniques, but that's the main one that I use, which is emotional freedom techniques. So those four steps of allow, allow it to be there and even give yourself a moment to kind of find where's that feeling in my body. Acknowledge it. Yep, there it is. That's mine. I'm feeling it. And, and allow your body to speak. Uh, get out of your head, <laughs> allow your body to speak if you can, accept that, yep, this is here, I'm I'm going to accept it and myself, no matter what, so that's super important, um, and there's a component of tapping that is built right in, an acceptance statement that's built right into the tapping, and then address it, then you have to be sure to tap 
um, or um, to do energy exercises, brain gym, um, do some kind of energy-based body-centered uh, somatic technique to help the emotional centers in your brain and then hence your physical body to, to come to a place of calm and, and peace. And, and that can be an ongoing task with grief especially bigger grief like a, a bigger loss because because it doesn't just you don't just treat it once and it goes away it's a sort of an ongoing process over time but certainly if you can follow these four steps you will find that even a big grief um is shorter in duration and you're more comfortable throughout the grief process if you if you address it if you address it so i like to use the example of you know you you had a grief you maybe lost somebody you're doing the dinner dishes one night and you suddenly out of nowhere think of something and you suddenly feel that wave of sadness that you take a moment to acknowledge it, allow it, accept it, put that dishcloth down and tap for a few minutes until it settles down. And you're treating yourself for that grief and sadness and allowing yourself to move forward, to finish your day, um, to continue to, to, to make sure that you're not um, immobilized in, in the grief. And I love how you say feel it in your body. And I think it's something a lot of us maybe get away from as we get older is not only allowing our feelings, I think in our cultures, we can be taught that feelings and emotions are bad or scary. Um, but the other piece is that where do you feel it in your body? But think about the phrase as a lump in my throat or a pit in my stomach or um, what, you know, sort of a, a pain in my neck. There's, there's lots of examples where we have in language and in phrases this idea of we feel something and we feel it in our body. And so to really tune into not only where we feel it, but I know another technique you use, um, Susan, is what is the color of it? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I often through the last year and a half, because I really do attribute a lot of my grief to the year prior to my dad's passing, as opposed to just the four months since he's been gone. But, um, you know, things, colors were definitely muted for me. Um, I remember, and and I'm going to go on record that I may get emotional during this podcast and I'm going to be okay with that. I hope everybody else is okay with that too. Um, and Susan is going to teach us a technique for how we can manage getting emotional if that should happen during this podcast. Um, but I remember saying to my husband, Dave, you know, do you think I will ever laugh again? Mm -hmm. And that was a big statement for someone like me who is, you know, a pretty joyful person and who has had a pretty blessed life. Um, I had quite frankly, to be totally honest, um, forgotten how to laugh. There was so much pressure in being my dad's caregiver, um, but also in the pain of his diagnosis and the knowledge yeah. that he was nearing the end. Um, and quite frankly, against his will. I think some people are very um, pragmatic when they get the news that they're not going to be here much longer and they accept their diagnosis that unfortunately was not my dad's uh, experience or reality. Um, and then there's also, uh, you know, it was, it was so tiring uh, taking care of him and getting him to the hospital and to the doctors and to the eye appointments and the ear appointments. And, and quite honestly, a lot of unnecessary appointments that he insisted on. And I met somebody last night, he bought chickens from every Christmas and, um, and insisted on going there himself and, and buying those locally raised chickens and giving them to people and so on. So um, there's a lot of work that went into my, his last year of life. And then, um, and I thought it would be better once he passed. I really thought that Whoops. suddenly it would all go away and, and life would get back to normal quickly. And it didn't. Uh, I remember my first month after losing him <clears throat> was I, I felt very disconnected, my head and my body. I, I felt like I was sleepwalking or I was underwater. There was lots of um, lots of different ways that I would describe it, but really just my head and my body were not connected at all. And uh, and it, it took it took a month of being okay, not being okay. And honestly, the the shifting moment for me, and someone had told me that, that this would most likely be the case, was his celebration of life and our ability to remember him and mourn him communally, which is why for anyone who didn't get to do that uh, during one of their loved one's passings because of the recent pandemic, I urge you to think about doing it anyway. Um, and it's never too late to have a celebration of life for mm -hmm. someone you love. Do it on the anniversary of their passing. Do it on their birthday. Do it at a time, whatever time makes sense for you, but don't, don't let that be taken from you. 
if you yeah. didn't get a chance to um, to mourn the, your loved one the way you wanted to. And you know, Sue, you've reminded me too of yet another one that I don't think we've covered. Um, but you, you know, definitely as we see our parents age and they lose their capability, you know, that they had in their prime, there's a grief around watching that, being witness to that. But I also am reminded this morning of how it must feel from their side, you know, from your dad's side, when you said, you know, he, he sort of fought leaving. That yeah. was his grief process. He's, I'm not ready to go. Right? <laughs> I, I, and dad says that to me still quite frequently. I'm not afraid to die but I don't want to because life is so wonderful, right? It's like, so for him, um, you know, being a part of life, continuing to participate as much as he's able to at 93 and in a wheelchair, um, but, but that, you know, involving him in the family celebrations and, and um, you know, hanging out, watching TV together, playing games, you know, he never played games when he's younger, but he's willing to now because I think he just wants to be a part of whatever he can be in life. And, and I, I'm you know reminded that, that that he's probably going through a grief process of the you know grieving his own life even though he's not gone yet. 100%. I remember walking downstairs early into the diagnosis <laughs> to my dad listening listening to sad country western songs and and crying, you know, and and really being sad about his diagnosis yeah. and uh anyway, um uh, I actually heard a story recently of a fellow must have been a British fellow, but he w was passing and he knew he was passing and he wanted to have um, the football team, soccer team, um, Manchester United, he wanted to hear their game as he was passing. Wow. Like, yeah. So like, you know, you think about that's what he was grieving. He was missing or anticipating the loss of a beloved sports team. Like, it's just so awesome. So awesome. Well, and it's going to happen to all of us. Right. And I think the other thing that you mentioned, the grieving, the aging of your parents, I think there's also some grief as we age ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you know, the things we used to be able to do, we're not able to do anymore. Uh, you mentioned curling earlier. I am new to the sport of curling um, and I can't get down into the <laughs> things they that. recommend you get down into as part of the sport of curling. And so, um, so I'm not quite, record. I am stick curling right now, yes. but, um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so it's, you know, things, things change as we age and yeah. there is some grief in that as well. And yeah. You begin to realize you're not as rubbery as you used to be. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't bounce quite the way we used to mm -hmm. either. So, Susan, why don't you tell us a little bit? We're at the bottom of the hour. And for everyone that's yep. joined us, we allowed 90 minutes for this podcast recording, um, not knowing how long we would actually take. It will be anywhere from 45 minutes to the to the 90 minutes, but we wanted to give ourselves lots of time, especially with this topic, as it is, um, as it is a loaded topic, yeah. emotional. And I'm, topic. I'm sure some people are already triggered a little bit, just have, you know, listening to our discussion. So I'll suggest if you are feeling a little emotionally triggered that you just tap um, on uh, just under your collarbone. Uh, there's some powerful acupressure points there just on either side of your sternum. So why don't I kind of lead into a little bit of tapping and then we'll take a participant. I noticed that Lisa's raised her hand. Um, but I'd like to just um, do a little bit of a preamble beforehand um, uh -huh. because um, a tapping is a, a very, or I'm using tapping and EFT and emotional freedom techniques on different names, but it's all the same thing. The common name is tapping. So you're tapping on acupressure points. Um, and I, and I want to kind of set things up um, in a way that um, holds you all emotionally safe. And um, so I also want to say, if you've had a very recent loss of a loved one, someone very close to you, you probably wouldn't be a good candidate um, and just uh, on the nature of this sort of being um, live and also our time constraints. But um, we may need a little bit more time um, for a very a recent deep grief. However, I can reassure you that um, you will get some relief if you tap along with us and um, you, uh, you. I highly recommend that you uh, seek out an accredited EFT practitioner and and uh, and tap with them to help you through the, that process for sure. So the easiest way I'm just going to kind of introduce tapping um, because there may be some of you on the call and on the podcast who don't uh, know what it is. Acupressure. Uh, the easiest way to think about tapping is acupressure for your emotions. So most of us know you can use acupressure for um, cigarette cravings, for example. There are powerful points in around your in your earlobes and around your ears. Um, uh, people know it for you know they'll get if they have a swollen knee they'll get acupuncture done um, to bring down the inflammation in that in that knee. Um, there's many 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 
many ways that acupuncture is used and acupressure is uh, a cousin of acupuncture um, but we, you know we don't we don't use any needles um, uh, we just use our fingertips to tap so if you can think of it as acupressure for your emotions hopefully that makes some sense and obviously your negative uncomfortable distressing emotions I don't really like to think of uh, emotions and feelings as good or bad, right or wrong, because again, that's so judgmental and it's just not allowing, it's almost disallowing um, the um, uh, ourselves to connect with the feeling and just let it be there. And there's a great sense of relief if you can do that to just say, hey, this is what it is. Even if I feel embarrassed about it, even if I know it's inappropriate or socially unacceptable, um, that I get to I get to have my own feelings and what a relief that can be. So um, the second thing is tapping is an energy therapy. Um, and, um, and I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm an accredited EFT trainer with EFT International, which is um, a global nonprofit organization that was originally based and founded in the UK, but is now worldwide. And it's uh, uh, tapping has been around uh, since the 80s and EFT in particular has been around since the early 90s. Um, it, uh, though having said that, you know, I'm not a psychotherapist and EFT isn't psychotherapy, EFT is used by many psychotherapists. It's used by many social workers, counselors, psychotherapists, um, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, psychiatric nurses, women in crisis workers. Um, I've been training people in mental health, using te teaching them how to use EFT for a long, long time. And when I first started training, there were only just a couple of people that were in the mental health field, usually social workers. And then there'd be lots of lay people. And now there's lots of people from mental health that are coming in. So that's really- reason PTSD, I think is one that's been particularly helped by tapping. Yeah, the science is very, very strong on, on the effectiveness with anxiety and with PTSD, it's well studied. So, um, so definitely, although um, we're not doing psychotherapy, it is an approved, in Ontario in particular, it is an approved technique for psychotherapists to use, but not just psychotherapists alone. It uh, definitely helps to improve your mental health and your outlook and your perspectives in life. So as long as you can own the feeling, allowing it to be there and tap with it and address it, it will actually diminish. And we can, we can watch, we can wire you up, <laughs> wire your brain up or watch your brain um, with magnetic resonance photos over time, over the number of sessions, and we can see your brain calm down. So um, uh, with tapping, when a session goes really well, your brain by the end of the session uh, looks like someone who's deep in meditation, conscious, but deep in meditation and is an experienced meditator, whether you've meditated or uh, at all or not. Um, it uh, helps to calm the emotional centers of the brain. It is scientifically valid and well-researched and the precursor to EFT, which is thought field therapy, TFT, is now evidence-based. Um, uh, it's important to remember that uh, positive change is created by focusing your attention on the distress. And that is a big one. So I almost kind of want you all to write that down. If you've got a piece of paper and pencil in front of you, um, that, that the key to success with this, and this is about the allowing side of things, is to let the feeling be there and focusing your attention on it. Now, if it is a very big feeling, if it's, if it's a, a very deep feeling, then we use other techniques to work on it without directly focusing on it. But in general, with moderate distress, we, we say um, focus on what you want to get rid of. That's the best way, the simplest way to think of it is, is um, a lot of times people think if I focus on it, if I talk about it, if I um, uh, think about it, it only gets worse. Yes, it does, unless you're tapping. So as long as you're tapping at the same time, it may come up and it may surge and it may crest, but it will eventually, if you keep tapping, it will subside. Um, I think, Susan, is an important thing as well. <clears throat> when you feel the emotions come up and we're tapping, don't stop, right? Just yeah, keep, that's... And even if it's just like you saw me do, do earlier, just lightly you know, sort of on a, a certain point that Susan will point out, um, stick with it and let the tapping calm the emotions and, and process the emotions. And that's one of the ways to keep from getting stuck in the emotion uh, is to keep tapping on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's like, my next, uh, my next uh, suggestion or my things I just wanted to cover was stay focused if the distress does peak it often does sometimes by focusing in on the distress it, it actually bubbles up a little bit and that um, is is not creating more of the feeling it's simply accessing what you already have stored in your body we have this lovely saying in the tapping world the issues in my tissues so as you focus on it and and, and you um you think about it you feel it you maybe notice where it is in your body then it can sometimes come up but again I have a golden rule is just keep tapping, just keep breathing and tapping, make sure you're well hydrated and it will, it will drop down. And another podcast, I can talk about why hydration is so important, but I won't do that today and take up too much time. Um, 
um, so uh, obviously this isn't a private session, um, but I want you also, and I think you probably agreed to this when you registered for the podcast, but it's important that you remember that you are completely responsible for your own emo emotional well-being and your mental health. And that if this podcast or any of our podcasts does stir up some feelings for you that aren't fully addressed by the end of the podcast, keep tapping for a few minutes afterwards, keep breathing, do not leave yourself sitting in that distress, keep breathing and tapping. And if you need to move your body a little bit, walk around, keep, keep tapping and it will subside. But if for any reason it stirs up and in a way that is uh, surprising to you or that you don't seem to be able to settle it down, reach out to um, your um, healthcare provider, your mental health care provider, or seek out a, um, an accredited practitioner. I'm happy to make referrals if people want to reach out to me because we don't always know what we've been through or what we're carrying inside our bodies. Um, so my golden rule is don't stop tapping. And I don't want you to participate if you can't agree to that, that if a big feeling comes up, you must continue to tap because I can't see you all. And if I could see you and I noticed you'd stop tapping, um, particularly if you're in a state of distress, I would remind you to keep tapping. So that's really important to do that. Um, okay, so those are the pieces that I want to be sure to cover to um, make sure that you're, you're all um, emotionally safe and that you're taking good care of yourself. And um, hey, Susan, I, before we go into it, I just want to um, I just want to run a very quick poll to see who has done it before yeah. uh, and understand. Uh, I, I could have asked for levels of expertise, um, but just try to get a sense of who, who's with us that understand tapping and have used tapping as a modality and who who have never heard of it before or and or have just never tried it before. So um, and great news, we're seeing you know, uh, more than half of people have tried it before, are experienced with tapping. Um, and for those of you who haven't, I feel like it was a game changer for me to have found it. And so uh, I, we look forward to sharing this modality with you. But as I said, we'll, um, we'll also talk about other ways that you can deal and process with your grief um, once we've kind of talk, walked through what tapping looks like. Okay. Somebody asked Susan, is it uh, similar to Reiki? Um, the way I usually answer that question is <laughs> Reiki and EFT, energy psychology, therapeutic touch, touch for health, cranial sacral therapy, they are all colors of the same rainbow. So they're all pointing you in the same direction, which is towards greater health and well being, but there's perhaps slightly different angles on getting there. Um, I find that um, with with Reiki, and I have uh, taken some Reiki training, and I've also received Reiki, is it's a very, very relaxing technique. But you may or may not be consciously aware of what you're letting go of. Not that you have to know, but um, it can be helpful to focus your intention on a particular situation, memory, event, uh, a feeling that you have a word for. You don't always have words for these distressing feelings, especially if they started when you were pre-verbal. But, but with Reiki, it's more about like, and, I, and I'm, like I said, I'm not a Reiki expert, but it seems to me that energy comes up and shifts through the body, but you may or may not know the specifics. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that they, they are very much like two colors of the rainbow, um, helping you to get, have a clear and clearer energy field, having a calmer and calmer body and brain, no matter what you've been through in life. Hope that answers your question. Perfect. Thanks, Susan. Thanks for asking, answering that. And I would also share for anyone who is on the podcast with us, you do have the option to ask questions um, and, and we will be notified. And as Susan said, in just a little bit, you're going to ha have the option to raise your hand if you want to bring your particular situation forward uh, for a little guided um, tapping on it. So back to you, Susan, for a, a review of what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, first of all, and myself included, I'm going to get everybody to have a drink of water, have some water because hydration is super important to you, um, your energy field at any time, but particularly when you're working on, um, changing perspective or healing something. <clears throat> and I even encourage you to sip a few times, um, throughout tapping. Um, so when we're measuring a distressing feeling, and in this situation, it's a grief of some sort. Uh, but in, in any distressing feeling we're working on with tapping, we use a scale from zero to 10, much like they use, you know, in, in a hospital for pain medication. What's your pain level? Four, six, eight. Well, it's the same with this. What's your distress? So zero being, this isn't upsetting me at all. It's, there's no emotion to it. And 10 being, I can barely sit still. I, I'm, I can't talk. I'm clinging to the ceiling. It's highly distressing. Um, and we want to kind of be careful 
to, if we have any sense of um, uh, ability to stabilize ourselves emotionally, we don't always, but if we do have a sense of having some sense of stability and control over it, that we can emotionally regulate ourselves. So if you know it's a 10, I want to say to you, you do not need to be a 10. You do not need to feel it to that extent to work on it. It's actually preferable to notice the feeling as about a six or a five or a seven, because sometimes when it goes to that really high state, we go into fight or flight. So that's an involuntary reflex that blocks everything. So the only thing that gets in the way of healing and particularly gets in the way of tapping is that fight, flight, freeze reflex. So we we don't want to, if we can avoid it, we don't want to activate that, that reflex. Sometimes just even talking about a situation can already get the brain into that uh, survival mode. And and um, and then and then sometimes you can tap and tap and tap and the feeling doesn't come down. You have to back it up and tap on the fact that a part of you is running for your life. It's kind of in emergency mode. So so uh, so we want to kind of find something that's a little more moderate just for the ease of uh, learning and doing this together today. So using that scale of zero to 10, we call it a SUDS scale, S-U-D-S, subjective units of distress. And so when you first sort of focus in on the feeling, you're going to measure um, um, how strong the feeling is. And if you can identify where you feel it in your body. So if you can come out of your head and what you think about this feeling or what you think about this event or memory um, and get down into your body, that's that's very, very helpful for your success with this. And not everybody can do that with ease, but if you're able to allow yourself to do that, um, it's it's helpful. Um, and, and then we're gonna tap on a series of acupressure points and we're gonna start with the side of the hand. That fight or flight reflex is, um, responds to the triple warmer meridian, which runs down through the side of the hand. So when we tap here, we're not only setting intention on what we wanna work on, we're also attempting to calm that triple warmer and that fight or flight reflex, just in case it's become activated. So it's kind of built into the process. And then we're gonna um, uh, repeat three times a basic statement. Oh, I'll gather some details from the volunteer and we will pop that into the setup statement on the side of the hand. And the setup statement is pretty simple. Even though I have this feeling, whatever it is, we're going to describe it. I deeply and completely accept myself. So you might want to write that down. Even though I have this feeling, comma, insert details, <laughs> I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, if you get a knee-jerk reaction of, I, but I don't accept myself, that's not okay that I feel this way. You can change up the second half of the st acceptance statement by saying, I'm working towards learning how to accept myself. So even though I have this feeling, and in this case, it may be some, some sense of loss or grief, I'm uh, willing to work towards, or I'm working towards learning how to accept myself. Most people can get on board with that. But the classic root statement is, even though I have this feeling, I deeply and completely accept myself. And that's that piece where I was uh, saying sort of step three of my process is that acceptance is built right into the setup. And then we're gonna choose a short little reminder phrase and we're going to use that reminder phrase. I'll walk you through it. And we're going to tap on a series of points, very powerful points on the face and on the torso and perhaps on the hand if we need to. So um, I okay to get started and do some tapping, Sue? I think so. And I think probably, Susan, maybe what we should do is you and I start together uh, and we'll tap through a round and then um, ask anyone who would like to come forward and tap on, on a particular situation to come forward. Mm -hmm. I will share with everyone um, one thing that may also happen is you might be tapping along with us and not have um, realized there is grief inside of you somewhere. What happens a lot through our lives is we go through situations, we get over it, we deal with it, we move on, um, but we maybe haven't processed it. And so it could still be hiding out in there. And uh, an example I'll share with all of you that came out of um, one of the first times I ever met Susan was I had... Um, I had a horse when I was quite young. Uh, I had to let her go as a teenager. And there was a lot of grief around that for me because she was at the time uh, one of my best friends. And I went forward 35 years, I think, maybe a little less, maybe it was whatever, it doesn't matter how long it was. But I moved on with my life. I got a new horse. Um, you know, as an adult, everything was great. And suddenly I found myself crying at unexplained times for absolutely no reason at all. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And eventually I put my finger on it that buying a new horse had triggered some grief mm -hmm. uh, from losing my first horse. And, and so I went to it. I was happy to see a therapist at the time and we talked through it and everything made complete sense to me. And I 
put it back in its box. And then I was at a tapping session with Susan and boom, it all came out again. And that time we were able to tap through it together and really release it from the body. I think a lot of time grief gets trapped inside of us. Um, I like to talk a lot about life shifts and things that happen as we age as wallpaper on the walls. You put a, a new layer of wallpaper over the old layer of wallpaper and you just keep on going. And at some point, you know, you realize that you've wallpapered over something that needs to come out, that needs to needs to be um uh, processed and removed in order to get back to, to bare walls. It's so that, it's that issue in our tissues and it's, and it's actually unprocessed shock. That's what it is. And, and we don't often speak about it that way, but it's unprocessed shock from the moment, even if in the end, it wasn't really that big a deal, right? Or somebody said to you, oh, come on, it's not that bad. You've just scraped your knees. Right. It, there's barely any blood, but to you in the moment, perhaps as a young child, right? That was a big deal. Ow. <laughs> I really hurt. Or maybe it wasn't the scrape you're upset about. It was the fact that somebody tripped you on purpose. That could have been the shock. So you don't always know the layers until you start tapping. There you go. And so I just share that with everyone to say something might come up for you. Loss of a pet, loss of a friend, um, moving away, what, whatever it might be. And it's OK. Whatever it is, it's OK. And we'll just ask you to just keep tapping through it. And uh, I also had a question uh, from someone who is going to have to leave us uh, soon. Will this recording be available? It will absolutely be available. Um, once we have uh, done what we need to do and published the episode, we will make sure if you've attended this um, uh, podcast recording that you get a copy of the link to go back and, and watch the whole thing. So anyone that does have to drop off at the top of the hour, we thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on future episodes. So Susan, let's show everybody how it's done. And yep. then let's go ahead and ask if there are any volunteers. Um, put your hand up now. Um, feel free to take it down after you see this. You might change your mind. But um, we really would like to invite people to join us if somebody's interested in tapping with Susan on a topic of your choice. OK, Susan? Mm -hmm. OK, we're going to tap first. You and me. OK, got it. So. <clears throat> We tap on the side of the hand and we do the setup statement. So you, I want you all to tap along. Okay, unless you're, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get you all to tap along so that you can experience this. But if you do have a 10 out of 10, uh, choose something more moderate if you can. If you've got a very yeah. recent deep grief, then, then choose something a little more moderate. And the statement is, so uh, we'll just pretend here that, you know, we'll just call it um, loss. So even though I have this loss, even though I have this loss and it's call and repeat with me <laughs> and it's maybe around a number six on that scale from zero to 10. And it's maybe around a number six on that scale of zero to 10. I'm noticing where I'm feeling it in my body right now. I'm noticing where I'm feeling it in my body right now. And I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this sense of loss. Even though I have this sense of loss. And I can feel it right now. And I can feel it right now. I'm addressing it. I'm addressing it. I'm noticing it. I'm noticing it. I'm focusing on it for a few moments. Focusing on it for a few moments. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. So I believe that was three times through. And then we come, two. was it two? Okay, <laughs> thank you for counting. Even though. Even though. I have this six sense of loss. Put your own number in there. Six sense of loss. Tongue twister. <laughs> I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Beautiful. Okay. And then we take index and middle finger. We're going to tap right on the inside edge of your eyebrows. So not up above your eyebrows, but right where your eyebrows meet the bridge of your nose. If you're tapping in the right place, you can't see very well. And we'll just repeat a statement, very simple, short statement, something like this loss. This loss. And take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Okay, and then come to the sides of the eyes, right on the corner of the orbital bone. It's not out on the temples, but right in tight to the uh, the beautiful bone that encircles our eyes to protect them. This loss. This loss. And then we're going to tap on the top of the cheekbones. This loss. This loss. Mm -hmm. And under the nose, this loss. This loss. Under the mouth, not on the chin. It is called the chin point, but it's actually in the crease under your mouth. This loss. This loss. Take another nice deep breath, everybody. Beautiful. Now we're going to come down to those collarbone points that I had shown you briefly earlier. So you've got a collarbone that comes around the front of your chest and you've got this beautiful big sternum bone that protects your heart. It's where the collarbone meets the sternum. There's almost like a joint there. There's sort of two little divots. And if you can curl your shoulders forward a little bit, you'll feel where it indent there's an indentation. Later, you can always go and like look in the take your shirt off and look in the bathroom mirror and you'll see these two divots if you roll your shoulders forward. 
and and not to worry if you don't have them exactly right EFT is very forgiving and if you're even off a little bit it will still work okay and I'm going to use an additional point just because I love it so much and that's the thymus point right in the middle of your sternum that high point on the gladiolus bone right there this loss yeah. okay and then we're going to come down just under the arms on the side seam of your shirt about four inches below your armpit or about where the side of your bra sits if you have one on Okay, we'll just go through those one more time. This loss. This loss. This loss. This loss. This loss. This loss. Mm -hmm. This loss. This loss. Under the mouth. This loss. This loss. Collarbones. This loss. This loss. Middle of the sternum. This loss. And under the arms. This loss. This loss. Okay, so we'll do two or three rounds like that with our volunteer, and depending on how they're feeling and looking, then we'll carry on a bit more or we'll come back and just kind of reassess. How's it feeling now, zero to 10? Very subjective, subjective units of distress. So it's about how it feels for the individual, for if you're tapping for yourself, how it feels for you inside your body in the present moment, not how it usually feels when it gets stirred up or how it felt when it was really bad or how it felt last week or last night, but how's it feeling right now in this moment? We can only um, address the present, <laughs> so. So those I, say I was able to go through that round without emotion, mostly because of the work that I've done with Susan and with tapping and with processing my grief. So it's not all at the surface for me anymore. Um, and so if it, you know, if it, you know, um, had I had a six or a seven or an eight on the grief scale, I would likely have been very teary doing that. Mm -hmm. um, or felt some discomfort in, in my body. I, I will tell you, I did not. And that's mostly because I don't, you know, sort of, I, I'm not in active grieving mode at this moment. Um, but I want to also uh, point out that, and obviously this is in case we've given the impression is this technique is just for sadness. It's great for any distressing feeling, shame, anger, rage, um, even feelings you don't have names for. Frustration. Yeah, I there's something a lot for frustration. Yeah, I there's something when I was a caregiver to my dad. Yeah, fear, <laughs> right? frustration. Yeah. yeah, frustration, resentment, fear and anxiety, bitterness, um, resentment. All you know, any any even rage. Um, it, it, it will respond to tapping. So, right. Do we have any volunteers? And this is yep. a unique. I'm just uh, looking. Um, <clears throat> I'm just. It looks like they. I guess it's really nice because Zoom puts people right at the top. Um. And uh, and I love that. So you can see the hands are up. I'm wondering, Kim um, Mommerstieg. <laughs> I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Kim. Um, can we can we have Kim sure. come into the main group as a volunteer? So I'm going to promote you to panelist, Kim, and you will come on screen with us. And I, uh, if you're not okay with that, um, you, I'm going to give you a second to bring your hand down. But otherwise, you're going to come in and join us on screen. People will be able to see you, um, and you'll. Oh, hand got lost. Okay. okay. I just that's, want totally to know. Mm -hmm. that's part of what this is, is, is you will be tapping with us. Now we may find that we want to do some, it, it's really important for Susan to be able to see you uh, if we're going to tap. Oh, she's back. She's okay. back. She changed All her right. mind or maybe it's just a, a zoom glitch. All right. So I'm promoting you I to recognize panelists. this name. I recognize this name, I think. So, so, um, <laughs> maybe she's just, there we go. She goes, Yay. <laughs> And you should be able to unmute yourself as well, but I can also unmute you. For now, I'm gonna close the attendees side of my screen, Sue, just so I've got a little more space here. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> there she is. Yay, hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for volunteering. No problem, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it takes a little bit of courage, but you know, it's a lot of fun and we're gonna do what we call borrowing benefits, which is you're gonna be kind of our mannequin, our body, our, our person volunteer in front of us, but everybody gets to borrow the benefits. Everybody gets to um, uh, uh, work on whatever they're they're dealing with um, via via us. So that's great. And you're not alone. And, and you've been seeing me sip. So I've got my tea here and I've got my water, but I'll get you to have another sip and I'll get other people to, to, to sip away. It's uh, again, I, go on and on about the hydration thing, but it is important. I actually did my training with you at Jose's and Forest. Oh, there we go. So that's what I thought I recognized your name six years ago, maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, Southwestern Ontario. It was you're out of my usual. Um, I know I it, but it was I great. needed to get you to come. <laughs> it was great to come down there. It was great to come down there. I loved it. I'd come again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was lovely being in uh, farm country down there is fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, so I'm just going to get a, a little bit of detail about your, you know, what you feel comfortable to share a little bit of detail, because we're going to throw that into the setup. Um, and we can certainly just call it the six feeling and you, you would still get results. But I want to kind of show people how you can um, address a little bit of the specifics about um, what's coming up for the person with, uh, with tapping. And I'm also wondering, um, Sue, I'm just going to see if I can pin Kim, I can. So that's again for me, just so I can see you really well. <laughs> okay, there you are. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so just give me a, and I'll maybe get you to tap a little on the side of your hand while you share a little bit of what um, you would, what you're wanting to work on today. So uh, it's been, I got COVID in the summertime yep. while I was coughing, my cervix fell out. Oh my goodness. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm oh. still off work because wow. I can't get my surgery and all my medical records are tied up. So I'm not getting any pay because my short-term disability has ended and my long-term, nobody can access my medical records to get my long-term started. Oh my goodness. So um, I have no money. I have a cervix that likes to play pokeroo and you know, <laughs> it's all good. I'm so using that statement. I'm so using that statement. <laughs> okay, so I'm writing down your exact words as much as I can quickly because the more I make it exactly how you see it, the better. As the person tapping with you, I don't want to get any of my interpretations or biases or my perspectives involved at all. It is not about me and there's no room for my stuff. I've already hopefully tapped down all of my stuff and I'm fairly untriggerable, although I wouldn't say um, uh, I, uh, nothing gets to me. Of course, things still get to me, but I don't uh, usually bring uh, my stuff doesn't usually come up in other people's sessions and that's the way it should be. So I'm going to use your words as much as possible. So I'm just taking some quick notes. So um, uh, on a scale of zero to 10, Kim, how um, distressing, how sad does this, you know, this situation feel for you? There's different angles to it and different numbers or pain levels so or whatever, which, but I'm going to say which piece the money side, the healthcare scare, the loss of your job, which feels like the tallest peak for you at the moment financial. Yeah. 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 Not surprising. It is a survival issue, right? It is. <laughs> I have most to feed. <laughs> yes. So there we go. Let's start. Um, and oh, sorry. And your number would be on, on that financial distress. I'd say about a four or five. Yeah. Beautiful. And repeating after me. Oh, and I should say for everyone else, um, focus in on your distress, your sense of grief or loss or um, uh, what's popping up for you and, and write down your SUDS number from zero to 10. So you have a reference point to refer back to uh, in a few rounds. And if you want to write down what you're working on, you can. And if you want to find a location in your body, you can as well. So even though, and, and then everybody focus on what you want to let go of and then repeat after me, even though I have this issue. Even though I have this issue. And it's around a four or a five. And it's around a four or a five. It's basically a long story that's been going on for months. It's basically a long story that's been going on for months. I had COVID in August. I had COVID in July. Sorry, July. I coughed and my cervix fell out. I coughed and my cervix fell out. And this created a cascade of events. This has created a cascade of events. Where I have to be off work. Where I have to be off work. I can't get surgery yet. I can't get surgery yet. My medical records are locked up for some reason. My medical records are locked up for some reason. And I can't access my benefits. And I can't access my benefits. I've run out of money. I've run out of money. And that's the key piece for me. And that's the key piece for me. I have mouths to feed. I have mouths to feed. And I'm about a four or a five on and that. I, I'm about a four or a five. Yeah. And I can feel it in my body. And I can feel it in my body. It's very worrying. It's very worrying to be out of money, to be out of money. <laughs> yeah. But I deeply and completely accept myself, but I deeply and completely accept myself. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Maybe if you can switch hands just for the bilateral tapping, both sides of the brain, even though I'm really worried about money now, even though I'm really worried about money now, it's been months. It's been months. And I still don't have access to my records. Still don't have access to my medical records. And to my medical records. I don't have any money left. And I don't have any money left. And I have mouths to feed. And I have mouths to feed. Yeah. And there's a sense of sadness. Uh, well, I shouldn't, you never said that. You never used that word, but okay, you're nodding. <laughs> yeah, there is a sense of sadness. Yes. Because I'm out of money. Because I'm out of money. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm around a four or a five on this issue. 
even though I'm around a four or a five on this issue. I don't have any money left. I don't have any money left. And surgery isn't in sight. And surgery isn't in sight. I need to get back to work, but I can't. I need to get back to work, but I can't. And my cervix that just wants to pop out and play. <laughs> my cervix wants to pop out and play. Yeah, I need surgery. I need surgery. Soon. Soon. I'm, I'm out of money. I'm out of money. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Nice deep breath, my dear. And just tapping up on the eyebrows here. I'm out of money. I'm out of money. Nice deep breath. Beside the eyes. And everyone can repeat Kim's words because in the setup, you set intention on your own issue. <clears throat> just use Kim's words for now and then we'll come back and check. I'm out of money. I'm out of money. Mm -hmm. Under the eyes. I'm out of money. I'm out of money. Under the nose. I'm out of money. I'm out of money. Under the mouth, I'm out of money. I'm out of money. Mm -hmm. Collarbones, I'm out of money. 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 And I have mouths to feed. And I have mouths to feed. Nice deep breath. Beside the eyes, I have mouths to feed. I have mouths to feed. Mm -hmm. Under the eyes, I have mouths to feed. I have mouths to feed. Under the nose, I have mouths to feed. I have mouths to feed. Mm -hmm. Under the mouth. I'm out of money and I have mouths to feed. I'm out of money and I have mouths to feed. Collarbones. And I feel really sad about it. And I feel really sad about it. I'm about a four or a five on that. I'm about a four or a five on that. In the middle of the sternum. I've got mouths to feed and I've got no money left. I've got mouths to feed and I've got <clears throat> no money left. Under the arms. No money left. No money left. Yeah. And we'll just tap very gently on the top of the head here. Just like heavy rain. Not too hard. It's a very sensitive spot for acupressure. I don't have any money left. I don't have any money left. I feel sad about that. I feel sad about that. Mm -hmm. So we just take a little breath. <clears throat> and um, usually I'll just say something very simple. I don't want to lead you anywhere. So I'll just say, what are you noticing now? Or what I are still, you? I still feel kind of the same. I'm just there. I'm just there. It's, I, yeah, like I'm, frustrated and yeah it brings up a whole lot of self-doubt right you can't do everything you want to do you can't pick things up you can't bend over you can't so it's like now yeah as I tap now it's shifting into all the other things that the problems it brings yes so I can't physically do the things that I want to do and there's some sadness and maybe even grief around that I can't bend over I can't pick things up yes yes and what would be the number from zero to ten on that layer <sighs> That would probably be about a six. Yeah, yeah. Do you have an idea where that six feeling sits in your body, Kim? My head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, because it's judgment, right? It's it's judgment that I should be and I'm not. So you're broken. So safe to say what's coming up for you is I feel broken. Yeah. I'm broken. Yeah. And I already was broken. I had the bloody tree fall on me and I bounce back and I'm I've already yeah. beat one of these wars yes okay so just for um for today um because we don't want to muddle the energies we'll keep the tree event maybe oh, yeah. for another day okay. that's okay but I get you I get what you're saying is hey wait a second how come I'm getting challenged again with one of these big ones yeah so I'll be sure to roll that in um but we want to um help you to kind of if we can um uh, if if you guessed I know it's a thought but if you guessed where you feel this, this sense of, of loss that you can't do, physically do the things you want to do and you're frustrated, if you guessed where you felt that in your body, what part of my, my heart or my chest? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And it feels like it's somewhere around a six. Can you tell me a little bit about the nature of that feeling in your chest? Does it feel, you know, hot, cold, buzzy, vibrating, heavy? Like you have just a couple of descriptors for me. It, um, it is uh, heavy and sometimes fluttery, like anxiety or, but it's... Uh, right now it feels, we want to kind of stick with the present moment. It feels more like a heavy feeling right now. Yeah, heavy yeah. and red. red. <laughs> yeah. And is it like within your chest or around your chest? In. In, within. Does it have a sidedness left to right, front to back? Not really. Yeah, Center. more central? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe more front than back, okay. yep. but yeah. And central. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And is it a familiar feeling? Yeah. You felt it before? Yes, I have. <laughs> How did I know that? Okay, here we go. Ready? So I'll get everybody else who's uh, still on the podcast with us um, to focus in on what you're noticing now. What's left for you? It, it could go anywhere. It, it could go to another feeling that is contributing to the sense of loss, sadness, or grief. Um, Kim mentioned self-judgment and she mentioned uh, frustration. Now, these are all the layers of the sadness. It's not a, a different feeling, but something underneath it kind of contributing to it. So um, focus in on what's left or what's, what you're aware of now. Give it a number and off we go again, even though I'm noticing. Even though I'm noticing. It's kind of a heavy feeling in my chest. It's kind of a heavy feeling in my chest. I call it, I call it red. I call it red. It's heavy and kind of at the front of my chest. It's heavy and kind of at the front of my chest. Mm -hmm. But very much within it. But very much within it. And I'm noticing it's a familiar feeling. And I'm noticing it's a familiar feeling. I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Mm -hmm. Even though I have this heavy feeling in my chest. Even though I have this heavy feeling in my chest. And it's familiar to me. And it's familiar to me. It's around a six right now in this moment. It's around a six right now in this moment. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this heavy feeling in the front of my chest. Even though I have this heavy feeling in the front of my chest. And it's contributing to this feeling like I, I can't do anything anymore. And it's contributing to the feeling of I can't do anything anymore. I can't bend over and I can't pick things up. I can't bend over and I can't pick things up. It's a heavy feeling right here. It's a heavy feeling right here. Mm -hmm. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And this feeling, no matter what. <laughs> and this feeling, no matter what. Yeah. So you can see how it's utterly about acceptance. Whatever it is, you do not ever judge the feelings. You simply allow them. And if you find yourself judging them, tap on the judgment. Settle that down, right? So coming up to the eyebrows, this heavy feeling. This heavy feeling. Mm -hmm. Nice deep breath. This heavy feeling in my chest. This heavy feeling in my chest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This heavy feeling in my chest. 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 Yeah, yeah. Somewhere around a six, I think. Somewhere around a six. Yeah, yeah. I'm noticing this heavy feeling in my chest. I'm noticing this heavy feeling in my chest. Yeah, this heavy feeling in my chest. This heavy feeling in my chest. Yeah. And then very gently on the top of your head, this heavy feeling in my chest. This heavy feeling in my chest. Mm -hmm. So just do a little check-in for me, Kim. With that heavy feeling, zero to 10, how strong, how intense would you say it is right now in this moment? It's come down to a five. Yeah. And the uh, sense of um, uh, loss um, about being able to, you know, not being able to bend over, pick things up, go to work. Yeah, it's down, probably a four. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, we'll do one more setup and one more, uh, a, a few rounds here, and then we'll just, we'll see where, where we are and, uh, and pause our work for now. But so, so even though I'm noticing. So even though I'm noticing. I might be a little in fight or flight. I might be a little in fight or flight. This is a big one for me. This is a big one for me. It's a health issue. It's a health issue. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. My life's pretty much been on hold since July. My life has pretty much been on hold since July. And I've run out of money now. And I've run out of money now. Mm -hmm. It's a heavy feeling in my chest. It's a heavy feeling in my chest. Yeah. And I can say that it's likely around a five. And I can say it's likely around a five. Mm -hmm. But I am frustrated that I can't do a lot of the things I want to do. I am frustrated that I can't do a lot of things that I want to do. And that's around a four for me. And that's around a four for me. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And how I feel. And how I feel. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Acceptance pack. Yeah. Okay, good. So even though I still have um, a round of uh, a four on, on the self-judgment. So even though I have a round of four on the self-judgment. A five around the feelings of worry about finances. And a five around the feeling of worry around finances. And this heavy feeling in my chest. And this heavy feeling in my chest. It's about a number. Five. Round of five, yeah. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely respect myself. This five feeling. This five feeling. Mm -hmm. Just noticing this five heaviness in my chest. This five heaviness in my chest. 
There's five heaviness in my chest. There's five heaviness in my chest. There's five heaviness. There's five heaviness. Mm -hmm. There's five heaviness in my chest. There's five heaviness in my chest. Yeah. There's five heaviness. There's five heaviness. Yeah. Just focusing on what's left now. Just focusing on what's left now. This cervix that just wants to pop out. The service for service cervix that just wants to pop out and everything that that has meant to me in my life and everything that that has meant to me in my life. Yeah, yeah. This heaviness in my chest. This heaviness in my chest. Beautiful. Okay, and I'm going to get you to do a little bit of uh, gamut tapping for us. I'm going to get you to tap on the back of your hand here between those last two um, knuckles, but mm -hmm. on the back of the hand. Just tap continuously and I'll get you to hold your head level, Kim, and you're going to close your eyes. And I'll get everyone else to do this as well. And then open your eyes, holding your head level, put your eyes down hard to the right, back to the center, down hard to the left and back to the center. Now slowly roll your eyes in a circle in one direction. Remember to breathe and keep tapping and then back in the other direction, of course, right? Now we're gonna hum and count and hum. And why on earth are we doing that? And that's because we wanna check right brain, left brain, right brain. And the communication across that big neural band of tissue, the corpus callosum, that, callosum, that, that sends information back and forth. So uh, we'll just hum, uh, happy birthday. And we'll slowly count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And then a little more happy birthday. And now we're going to do uh, an algorithm of tapping. You're going to go to the base of your skull, Kim, and just tap there for a moment. And everybody else again can tap along. And then on the very top, on the point of your head, midline technique. And then we're going to go between the eyebrows. Nice deep breath is helpful here. <clears throat> Under your nose. Under your mouth, I'm using both fingers now, just again, bilateral, get both sides of the brain involved and clearing. And I'm following my fingers, they tell me what to do. We're gonna hang out here for a little bit longer, Kim, and I got a little syncopation happening. <laughs> Let that happen. So this is a uh, central meridian. Sometimes things hit us right in the center, right up that midline. There we go. And then um, uh, middle of the sternum on that thymus point, and about an inch to an inch and a half under your belly button. Beautiful. Okay. Wow. All right. Take a nice deep breath. A little sip of water or tea, whatever you have. I'm out right now. I got to go refill in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. And just checking in. Oh, we got a few little windows open here. But that's okay. Checking first with the heaviness feeling in the chest. It was kind of towards the front of your chest. Last time we checked in, it was around a five. It's okay to say it's still a five or it's even higher. That's fine. It's probably down to a, a four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And the, um, the six feeling, that feeling of, um, oh, actually, no, you said it was a four around the self-judgment. Mm -hmm. I should be able to do things. I should be able to go back to work. I'm sort of judging myself for this uh, health issue. It's still there. Probably a four still. Okay. That's all right. Yep. Yeah. And um, sadness, that's sort of kind of where we started, the sadness of um, uh, there not being enough money. The, yeah. Does it still feel like sadness, first of all? Or Because uh, I'm not sure you used that word. I think that was more me that said that. I, it's probably, uh, it, it's fear of, fear of, not having the income come in. It's it's more fear than sad, but. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if there was a, a sort of a sad layer to that, what number pops to mind? A four. Yeah, and the fear part, fear component? Well, it's coming down now, but it was, I'm gonna say it's it's like a five. Yeah, yeah. So there's been a little bit of a drop in that one as well. So each of them have come down a little bit. But mm -hmm. they're not dropping significantly like we would expect. And I, and I know why that is. It's because, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a survival issue. So we're going to quickly do one more quick round. And I'll show you what you would do if you're noticing, well, it's feeling a little bit better, but it's not, 
it's not really clearing. And we've done a fair bit of tapping. Mm -hmm. It's because of that fight or flight. And again, money and finances are a survival issue. So let's see. We'll just see what happens. No pressure at all. We'll just see what happens. So even though this is kind of a life or death thing for me. Even though it's kind of a life or death thing for me. It's survival. It's survival. Very little sadness, really. It's more about fear and worry. Very little sadness, really. It's more about fear and worry. Yeah. And I am very likely in my fight or flight. And I'm very likely in my fight or flight. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I might be in my fight or flight. Even though I might be in my fight or flight. There's a part of me, not all of me, but a part of me. There's a part of me, not all of me, but a part of me. That's running for my life. That's running for my life. And it's hard to heal when you're running for your life. And it's hard to heal when you're running for your life. Yeah. It's hard to process shock when you're running for your life. <laughs> it's hard to process shock when you're running for your life. And I deeply and completely accept myself. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm in emergency mode. Even though I'm in emergency mode. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Yeah. Yeah. A part of me is running for my life. A part of me is running for my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because this is about money. Because this is about money. About mouths that need to be fed. About mouths that need to be fed. Yeah. I've run out of money. I've run out of money. Yeah. I've run out of money. I've run out of money. And there's probably a part of me... And there's probably a part of me it's locked into fight or flight. It's locked into fight or flight. <clears throat> yeah. It's even hard to think straight when you're it's in fight or flight. It's even hard to think straight when you're in fight or flight. Hard to focus. Hard to focus. There's a part of me that thinks I'm running from a grizzly bear. There's a part of me that thinks I'm running from a grizzly bear. It's really just that there's not a lot of money in my bank account. It's really just that there's not a lot of money in my bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And again, we're going to go to the base of the skull. Top of the head. middle uh, between the forehead <laughs> between the eyebrows <laughs> middle of the forehead <laughs> just under your nose just under your mouth middle of the sternum beautiful okay and then under your arms and i'll just get you to tap very slowly on your your uh, thymus point as well here ken and again just a little check in with no pressure at all but what are you aware of now <clears throat> I feel lighter. Mm -hmm. I still feel a little bit of whatever in my chest, but it's it's not as strong. It's lighter. Yeah. What number would you give it now? Would you guess? A three. Yeah. Two, maybe even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The self judgment. A two. Mm -hmm. On the feeling of frustration that you can't bend over, you can't pick things up, you can't physically do the things that you normally love to do or have to do. That one's still a tough one. Yeah, interesting, right? Yeah. So there's a because in there. And that's where we would go if we were doing a session. We won't do that now. But that's mm -hmm. a tough one for me because. And you would fill in that sentence and that, that would be our next setup. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's, so that's my grief is I can't do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, and that that may be that we you know we may have sort of tapped our way to the core. This injury has basically stopped you from being able to when you when you address it all. I can't make the money I need to make to take care of myself and my family. I can't pick things up. I can't bend over. Hey, wait a second! I already went through something that was pretty heavy, and it's like I can't do what I want to do. I can't. My life is on hold. Right. So that is very likely that sort of that grief piece. So um, just tapping in the middle of your sternum. I can't do what I want to do. I can't do what I want to do. That's that's the kernel. That's the center of this issue. That's the center of this issue. Yeah. The, the piece that's loss and sadness for me. The piece that's loss and sadness for me. Is that I, my life is on hold right now. Is that my life is on hold right now. And I can't do what I want to do. And I can't do what I want to do. I'm stopped from doing what I want to do. I'm stopped from doing what I want to do. In a number, right? In a number of different ways, right? Just waiting for surgery, health benefit, um, extended health care, um, finances, et cetera. Yeah. 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 Okay. Take a nice deep breath. And I know you know how to tap. <laughs> so you can take those layers, maybe write them down now while you remember, because you're in your right brain when you're tapping. You don't always remember what you've tapped on or what's popped up, but just write down those pieces that have emerged for you. And But that the, the key component is, I don't get to do what I want to do. I can't do. I'm stopped from doing what I want to do. How true does that belief feel? 
not how much do I think it's true, but how uncomfortable does that belief feel in my body? And then describe how that describe the uh, symptomology of how that feels. And that's your next setup. It could be a heaviness in the chest. It could be a tight throat. It could be a tension. It could be nausea. It could be, you know, anything. You just absolutely accept whatever pops up and let that be there. And then re come back, do a few rounds and re-measure the physical symptoms of the distress of that same belief. Say it exactly the same. I can't do what I want to do, period. And tap until that statement, not so much that it's going to necessarily change the circumstances out in your life, but it's going to change your perspective about the circumstances out in your life. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and if you can come out of that fight or flight reflex with it, which I think you will, um, then your brain, the blood rushes back into the forebrain where you can recognize you have choice, you can make decisions, you can problem solve, you can strategize. That all happens at the very front of the brain. And when we're in front flight, fight or flight, we're on the run. And that blood is in our arms and legs so we can run away or we can fight because body thinks we're under attack. Right. Ancient, ancient reflex. So when the blood, when you come out of fight or flight and the blood comes back into the forebrain, all of a sudden you go, oh, I know what I could do or I know who I could call or I know what I haven't tried. Geez, maybe I should talk to so-and-so. Maybe mm-hmm. I need to kind of take this up a notch, right? Get louder, whatever, right? So the ideas and options will emerge even when things uh, feel like a waiting game or that things are a little hopeless. Um, it can just even be um, not necessarily a choice or decision, but just a brighter perspective, right? right? Sometimes something as simple as, well, you know, the rest of me is pretty darn healthy. Right? Or, wow, so-and-so is dealing with that. That's hard. This is hard but I'll take this over that. Sometimes it can just be a shift in perspective that makes things feel a little lighter. And you can't get there just with your head, right? You can't think your way there or you would have already. Mm-hmm. It's a place you have to get to f- through your body. Mm-hmm. And the tapping helps your body to arrive at a brighter, more positive perspective. Even if it's just a calmness around acceptance of the situation right now. Right. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, and I'm wondering if, uh, if, I don't know, Sue, do you think we could take a couple of minutes for questions? If anybody wants to ask Kim a question about how it feels from her end, would you be willing to take a couple of questions, Kim? Yeah, yep. certainly feel free to put questions into the chat and we can share those with Kim and have Kim respond. I will say, Kim, that you did get a big thank you from someone for stepping forward and volunteering and choosing to uh, to be vulnerable with all of us today. So thank you for that. And I personally, um, you know, it just, I think, showed to everyone who is participating with us today that grief can be like in the forefront or it can be in the background of something that we're dealing with. And when something happens to us that's beyond our control, we will often grieve the impact of that thing that has happened to us. And, you know, I personally really thank you for, for sharing your story and being part of uh, the podcast today. So thank you for coming forward. You're welcome. So we don't have uh, any questions, Susan, and I think just in the interest of time, yep. I think we'll just wrap things up. Uh, Kim, I'm going to put you back as an attendee. And, uh, Thank you, Kim. It's nice to see you. You as well. Thank you. And call if you need any additional help. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And that was going to be the other thing that I was going to say, Susan, which is sometimes some things need professional help. Um, you talked a lot about it, it being a survival issue, and when we're dealing with a survival issue, it can be something we can't process on our own. I will share with everyone who's with us on the podcast that I worked with Susan extensively throughout the last eight years, in fact, on multiple different things as they came up in our lives. We had, you know, in our family, we've had issues with um, rare illnesses, addictions, mental illness, uh, and then obviously death and dying. And so lots of things that Susan and I, and I have worked on through the last eight years. Uh, there are sites that can help you tap um, and provide tapping scripts to self tap. Um, but I personally needed a partner who could tap with me and could hold me safe and help me get below uh, to some of the deeper issues that and custom design, it, right? Custom design it for you. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the scripting and uh, recordings. I think they're a good place to start and to sample EFT, but I find most times people go very quickly from the distress and negative and jump into positive and they start trying to tap in the positive. So I'm not a huge fan. I think you really need to allow the distress to leave first. You have to clean the garbage out and then the brightness will just arrive. You don't have to work at it. I agree. I agree. Um, and I also want to share for everybody that's um, on the call that we talked about the fact there are other things you can do. Tapping is a great modality. It really helps clear things. Um, I don't know if you saw me yawning a lot 
um, <laughs> while uh, Susan um, was tapping. That to me told me there were people that were getting some relief. Um, possibly I was getting some relief, you know, sort of tapping along um, with Susan and Kim. But there's also, I think, um, so you will, if you felt yawns and burps or other things that might have happened, that's just an indication that something is shifting and something is um, is potentially resolving itself. If you feel worse now than you did when we started, then please reach out and get help from someone who's accredited uh, EFT practitioner who can help you process through whatever came up for you. Um, this is really meant to help, you know, sort of you understand the layers of grief and the, and the, the role that grief can play in our lives across many different spectrums. So if you feel stuck somewhere, we're actually, we've got a topic on that, don't we, Susan, about how we get unstuck from things that uh, that cause us to be stuck and keep us from moving forward in our lives and our careers and our homes and our marriages and our uh, in our physical health, whatever it might be. So that will be a topic for a future podcast. Um, but it's, ex you know, certainly exciting for us that all of you have joined us. I'm sorry, we kept you a little long here. Uh, still working with the um, with the timing and figuring out what the right amount of time is and and we want to leave enough time to actually affect change and help people deal with whatever uh life shifts or um uh, challenging issues they might be facing so anything susan you'd like to say as we wrap things up here I was, yeah i was just going to say if anybody wants to share their experience with us they can certainly do that through um uh emailing emailing us and reach, reaching out to us through facebook messaging uh we're, we're happy to respond, reply. Um, uh, if you are wondering about next steps, or uh, if you had an experience that you're not sure what, what happened, or if you have a question about what I was doing, um, happy to, uh, or qu any questions about what we've been chatting about um, today, please uh, just reach out to us. Don't feel like you um, are on your own. <laughs> exactly. You're not on your own. You're not alone as evidenced. You can't see all the people that are on the um on the podcast with us, but we had a great number of people join us and stick with us right through to till the end. Um, and what I would share with all of you is grief is a process uh, and it's okay to not be okay. Um, I had a good friend who shared the the phrase, this is how it is right now. Uh, Susan talked about acceptance. Like I think a lot of times we do have self-judgment and we feel like it's it's not okay to not be okay. We feel like we should be better. I remember feeling um, in the weeks after dad passed, that it wasn't, that I, I couldn't believe how, how badly I felt, given that I knew it was coming. I felt somehow I should have um, not have had it affect me so much, but I was very conscious of accepting exactly how I was feeling, giving myself the time and the grace uh, to feel what I was feeling um, and to reach out to to people to help me process how I was feeling, whether it's somebody else who's been through it before, uh, writing and journaling, meditating, um, and, and tapping remains one of my, um, I think, best solutions for dealing with the emotions that come up as, as life deals us interesting hands. So, all right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm Thanks. Susan Van Klink. <laughs> and I'm Susan Bushell. Thank you for joining us for the Susan Squared podcast. We will be happy to have you join us again next month, which is, I believe, January 10th. And uh, you will get a reminder for our next podcast. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. And Thanks. have a great day. Mm -hmm.